All right, so today I want to talk about 10 things that you may want to avoid putting in your snake enclosure. Some of these could be potentially dangerous for your snake and some could be potentially deadly. You definitely have to be careful as far as what you're adding. And I actually went to a rack system like the rack system behind me. And let me tell you, this is probably the easiest type of system for a lot of ball pythons. I actually keep and breed ball pythons here in my reptile room. And sometimes I'll have like anywhere from 50 to like 150 snakes at one time here in my reptile room. And it's really easy keeping them in these racks. Essentially what these are, they're just gray tubs with some substrate and a cup of water in each of the tubs. Really easy and not a lot that a ball python could actually get in trouble with. But a lot of people, especially if you just have a few snakes, they opt to go to like a more fancier type of enclosure, maybe a large glass aquarium. A lot of people put a lot of hides in there and a lot of plants. I've actually even seen some waterfalls and stuff like that. Some really cool setups, but you really have to be careful as far as what you're adding to that type of enclosure. Some of the stuff can really get you into trouble. I actually made a list of 10 things which I consider pretty much the top 10 things that you really want to stay away from if you have one of these glass type enclosures with a lot of enrichment in the enclosure. And probably the number one thing that I would really watch out for is driftwood or decorations with holes in it. I actually started, in, in, as a matter of fact, I actually started in snakes before I started in ball pythons. About five years ago, I started with a whole variety of different snakes. And one of those snakes was a king snake. I had a king snake in an enclosure. It was a glass aquarium. And I thought, all right, I want to do the type of enrichment type of enclosure. I had a bunch of hides and some driftwood. And one of the things I put in there it was actually a little log that was designed to be in an aquarium. And it was all full of holes. It was a plastic log. And believe it or not, that snake crawled inside of that log and I thought it was stuck and I thought it could not get out of that log. And it was in there for weeks and weeks and I was starting to panic. I couldn't really pull it out or push it out. And finally that snake, after about three weeks, finally came out of that log. And let me tell you, I was panicking for a little bit. I've actually seen a lot of snakes get stuck in certain things like logs. As a matter of fact, when I was in ball pythons for about two years, I produced one of my ball pythons. It was one of my very first ones. And I got some weight on it. I think it was like maybe five or 600 grams. And I sold it at a reptile show and someone bought it. It had some really good body weight to it. So uh, th when I actually sold it, the person that bought it had a problem feeding that ball python and could not feed that ball python for, I think it was like five or six months. That thing would not eat. And it was the only time that I bought a snake back from one of my customers because it wouldn't eat. Usually they'll, they'll, they'll eventually eat. And the, kind of the funny part of the story is when they brought that snake back, the snake was in a really big enclosure with a big piece of driftwood. And that snake went inside of the driftwood and it was stuck in the driftwood. When they gave me the snake back, essentially what they did is they brought me this big four foot long piece of driftwood with the snake stuck in the driftwood. And I tried to get that thing out for a couple days and it would not come out and would not come out. And finally what I did is I actually took a metal bar and cracked it open to get the snake out of the piece of driftwood. But you can really get in trouble if your snake gets stuck in some of these decorations. So I definitely would look at everything you have in your enclosure and make sure there's nowhere a ball python or any other snake can really get jammed into a tight spot. So number two, I would really avoid anything with sharp edges. And I actually have an enclosure that I keep my reticulated python in that's a six foot long enclosure. And my reticulated python's pretty heavy. And I found there's actually a sharp edge. When I open up the sliding glass on the door, the lip underneath the, right on the bottom of the tank is pretty sharp. And you wouldn't think it's that sharp, but you actually have a really big snake sliding against it. And it's, to me, it seems like it's a sharp edge. So every time I open it up, and take that snake out what I actually do is I put a cloth of like a like a beach towel over that sharp edge to make sure you know it doesn't hurt my snake but I would go through every little spot on your enclosure to make sure there's no sharp edges as a matter of fact I found out on my boa tubs that on the outside corner of my boa tub there's a sharp edge you have to really be careful and look all the way around inside and outside of your enclosure for any sharp edges that could potentially hurt your snake. 
So number three, one big thing you really want to watch out for is tape. Any kind of tape in your enclosure. Sometimes you're tempted to, you know, tape things up on the inside of the enclosure. And let me tell you, it can act like a, like a glue trap and your snakes can get hung up in the tape. If I was actually using tape in an enclosure for whatever reason, probably what I would do is I'd follow it up with a little silicone sealant all around the tape on the edges to make sure that tape doesn't come off and your snake gets stuck in it. Most people will tell you, never use any kind of tape in your snake enclosure. I've seen some really bad things happen when people are using tape in with their snakes. All right, so number four this is one of the things I ran into with my rodents. I actually had these empty paper towel rolls, kind of like, uh, you actually see like the, the, like the toilet paper rolls or the paper towels, like the tubes on the inside of the roll. And I was throwing them in with my rodents. It was, it was, it was you know, the rodents really like to chew on those rolls. And I actually got a rodent that was stuck inside of one of those rolls. And it's kind of weird because the rodents, you know, they slowly grow bigger and bigger and bigger. They're used to going in and out of those tubes tubes and eventually they get to the size where they run through the tube and they get stuck and they can't get out and I would imagine it could be the same with your snakes if you have you know a really big snake and the, some kind of a cardboard tube or something like that I'd definitely be careful of that as a matter of fact I still throw them in with my rats but what I do is I actually take a scissors and cut both sides I actually cut them completely in half so you know the, the, the rodents like to chew on them but you, they can definitely get stuck in them and I would think anything similar the snakes do get stuck in them too. So number five, another thing to really keep an eye out for is deep water. If you have like a really deep water dish, especially if you have a snake with a head wobble, like a snake that has the spider gene or the champagne, there's a whole bunch of genes that actually can give your snake a head wobble. There's uh, the Powerball actually, uh, the super spot nose can have some, some head wobble. So if your snake has any little bit of head wobble, I definitely make sure to only fill the water just a little bit so that snake doesn't get in trouble getting into that water. So deep water could be a problem, especially with snakes that have a little bit of head wobble. So number six, anything electric like a heat mat or a heat rock, uh, definitely be careful of anything electric in the tank. Uh, usually heat rocks, most people stay away from heat rocks because heat rocks get too hot for ball pythons. Some people say they actually take a heat rock and they run a thermostat to the heat rock to precisely control it. But the problem is if you run anything into the tank that's electric and then you have some water spill and you have a short in that wire, potentially Eventually you can have a problem with electrocution. So I definitely not mix any kind of a water bowl with anything electric in the tank. Most people say if you have anything electric on a reptile tank, it should be underneath the tank or hanging above it. It should not be in there down on the ground with the snake. So number seven, this is another thing you should watch out for. This, as a matter of fact, I watch out for this with my fish <laughs> in my aquariums. Anything heavy that can fall over, you definitely don't want to stack up a whole bunch of rocks and then run into the problem where the snake can kind of crawl through and then be toppled by like a little mini avalanche or something in your snake. Anything that's really heavy, especially if you have a really large enclosure and some really heavy logs or something like that, I would definitely be careful of anything like that. I don't know what Bobby's doing. He's kind of crawling all over the place. This is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. Kind of crazy. All right, so number eight is netting. It was kind of interesting. Early on in my ball python career, I had I actually switched to a paper substrate and I had a problem with humidity. So kind of my cure for my humidity problems with a paper substrate, I was actually making these moss balls, which was sphagnum moss, and then I'd cover them with a netting. And when I first started using those, I used a really kind of a wider mesh netting. And I actually had one of my, it was an Arizona mountain king snake that kind of burrowed right through the moss ball and got stuck in the middle of the moss ball. It was like in halfway on the snake and that snake got stuck. It's it kind of the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And I actually had to go in there and cut off the, the, the netting from around the snake. Let me tell you, I took a whole bunch of bites
bites when I was trying to free that snake. It was kind of crazy. So anything with netting that could potentially be, you know, where your snake gets, you know, pushed through and stuck in the netting, I would definitely avoid that. So the moss balls actually work pretty good. I actually finally switched to kind of a nylon type of material, like a stocking or something like that, like disposable socks is what I went to for a little bit. If you want to switch over and try the paper substrate for a while and get, you know, use like a sphagnum moss in like the nylon disposable socks as a source of humidity you can kind of soak them in water a little bit the problem with a paper substrate is you're always chasing the mess it gets really messy and you're always i actually went back to a coconut husk and kind of gave up on my paper substrate Another one I'd probably avoid is tall branches or anything really tall. So if you're setting up an enclosure, probably what I would do is I would have something like a long aquarium, not necessarily something that's really tall. So the taller you go, if you stack stuff really tall, I've actually seen people really concerned about their snakes climbing up in branches really far above the, the bottom of the enclosure and then accidentally falling. So if your snake took a large enough fall, it could potentially hurt itself from the fall so there's you, know, you kind of have you know different things you can have stuff falling on the snake or you can have the snake falling from limbs or branches if you have a really tall enclosure that's another thing to keep in mind so the last one, number 10, one thing you should really be careful of in reptile enclosures in general, and that is cedar wood shavings. Any type of cedar, it smells really good. Cedars, you know, any type of pine or cedar can be really toxic to reptiles. I would definitely avoid any type of cedar. As a matter of fact, a lot of people say you should probably stay away from sand and kitty litter and a bunch of stuff like that that can be really toxic. You know, with, with certain snakes, you can actually use sand, but I'd say, for ball pythons and most snakes you really don't want to use sand you definitely don't want to use any type of cedar or kitty litter because of the toxicity so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video